Hi, in this video, I'll talk about different data science case studies uh, in healthcare. First one is about using uh, AI algorithms to improve uh, diagnostic systems. So diagnosis of disease is an important thing in healthcare. If the diagnosis is not uh, correct, then uh, treatment of the disease will not also be correct. Hence, diagnosis is so important there. The wrong diagnosis will result in death of the patient. So therefore, it's very important to reduce the error uh, in diagnosis. And as human beings, we tend to make errors and so do the uh, doctors, the radiologists, right? When they analyze the test results, they often, they sometimes make uh, error, which result uh, in the death of the patients. So this is an important problem where artificial intelligence can uh, bring changes. And there have been some studies where the AI algorithm has been able to produce um, better results compared to the, the doctors. Um, and it's also important because in many cases, early diagnosis is the key for survival of the patients. For example, in the case of cancer, uh, if the diagnosis is early, then the chances of patient recovering from the disease is also more. Uh, so, so therefore, it's important that uh, you know, instead of just relying on the view of the radiologist or the or the doctors treating you, it's also um, good if you know we take help of uh, algorithms, which will first uh, analyze the data from CT scan, X-ray, um, yeah, all kinds of tests, and then give us the results. So it's not just uh, supplements the 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 analysis that the doctor himself is doing, it also sometimes produces better results compared to the uh, to the doctors. And there have been some studies. Um, uh, one such study is, uh, is was done in Stanford University where the, um, uh, the AI algorithm uh, produced better results when it comes to lung cancer uh, uh, identification compared to the human uh, radiologists. So that's quite encouraging. Although it's a bit, you know, in, it's a bit delicate. The matter is a bit delicate because uh, it's difficult to really trust the algorithm completely, uh, especially in, in the case of healthcare, where you know it's a matter of somebody's uh, life. But uh, these algorithms can always supplement the work done by the doctor. So, you know, so it, it may not be completely foolproof. It may not uh, completely replace the doctor, but it can certainly help the doctor for better diagnosis. Uh, Google has also done quite some research. Uh, if you go to Google research and there are a few areas of research they do, one such area is the health and bioscience. And if you go down, you can see some of the research paper on uh, uh, on healthcare, one such uh, research paper was like deep learning algorithms for automated sleep stage scoring using heart rate variability. And then the other one is the predicting the risk of developing diabetic retinopathy using deep learning. So they're, they're also doing a uh, lot of research on identification of disease, uh, diagnosis of disease, uh, curing disease, uh, personalized medi medication and, and things like that. So you can also go there and visit their site just to understand how how they're doing it, uh, what's the source of the data, where you can find uh, free data to do your own research on using machine learning AI in uh, healthcare. Okay, the next one is the genetic research. Uh, it's very promising. Um, the, it, it's been there, I think, quite a while. It's not new. But um, one thing that is very difficult in genetic research is because there's a gamut of data, there's a huge amount of data, and storage of data, processing of data, and analyzing data in genetic research has always been a, a challenge. Uh, but more recently, with the advancement of computing, uh, this is getting ground, this is becoming a lot easier. 
So uh, the um, machine learning algorithms are helping actually in terms of finding relationship between DNA and the different diseases. The computation has become much better, uh, much more efficient. Um, and it's actually helping in terms of using personal genome data for uh, identification of disease, cure of disease. So huge data. Uh, so data science is actually uh, has a lot of uh, has shown a lot of promise uh, in genetic research. Uh, then computational drug discovery. Uh, as you, you probably know this, but drug discovery is a very very time consuming thing. It takes years to uh, test a drug, come up with a drug for a disease. But in the times that we live in, it's very important that you know we uh, get uh, drugs quickly for use. Otherwise, you know it is very very uh, problematic for the society because uh, people die in the meanwhile before the drug is approved and you know is uh, is good enough to be used. So computational techniques are now being used. Uh, earlier, they were less available for uh, for you know, designing compounds and analyzing chemical interactions. So this wasn't possible. There used to be a more manual way of doing it, but now computational techniques are being used. And there is a you know, field of study also, it's called computational drug discovery. You know, you can find many research paper on that. I was going through one of the research paper on nature, I was talking about how computational algorithms, including the machine learning algorithms, are are being used for uh, drug discovery. So it's also being used for clinical tests and clinical trials. We'll talk about a bit more in the next few slides. The next one is uh, the early warning signals. Um, it's um, more, uh, it's, it's quite, it's gone to a lot of attention in the recent times. Uh, you know, there are a lot of uh, devices that have, uh, that, you know, the many startups have come up with, which you can wave. And that what that will do is it will collect the data related to your vital organs, such as heart, lungs, um, kidney, and other vital organs. Uh, and this is wearable, right? So you can simply wear like a watch, uh, right? And it what it does is it continuously analyzes the data to detect potential health issues, especially related to heart, for example, right? Because in these times, many young people are also dying of heart diseases. Uh, and if there is a system that can warn you, can give you a warning that you are likely to have a, a heart attack, let's say in 10 days time, so you will can take then precautions. So that's a, a very promising area. And uh, again, machine learning models have been used for predicting the, uh, you know, this uh, events, the potential events, uh, hazardous event for health. Um, the next one is clinical trials. Um, in the times of Corona crisis, you know we are all aware of what clinical trials are. Even if we were we were less uh, familiar with what clinical trials are, because we are all waiting for the vaccines, and as you know, uh, you know it's taking a lot of time for the clinical trials. Um, it's again a very time-consuming activity. Um, among other reasons, one reason is predicting the bioactivity or the interactions of different characteristics. Um, and that's being possible through uh, algorithms, uh, machine learning algorithms. Uh, again, there, there's not a lot of uh, results available to prove that it is, it's uh, helping a lot, but uh, there, is, uh, there is a research area already, uh, which, is, uh, which is dedicated to to actually understand if there is indeed a, a relationship which, which can be very helpful to sort of speed up the clinical trial. So it's one, again, it hasn't shown a lot of promise, but a good, uh, a promising, uh, well, maybe in the future, uh, a, a promising research area. Uh, and which, what, what will happen is that there will be faster delivery of trial results. Okay, it hasn't, by the way, it hasn't really helped. The many uh, scientists who are working on this, um, but it has some promise in the future, uh, but you know it's too early to say that it will help. Uh, then automation of repetitive processes, uh, like any other areas of machine learning, uh, AI is helping uh, to automate a lot of these manual uh, or more operational uh, tasks. So administrative tasks are very, very important in healthcare, 
whether it's uh, you know maintaining records storing data related to patients and you know their test results and so on and so forth um, and automating that is very important uh, and when you automate that it's less uh, error prone and because of the administrative errors many patients sometimes die they do not get proper medication on time as a result they die and that uh, error rate can very well be reduced to automation uh, and artificial intelligence is helping a lot on that in in developed countries now uh, you know a lot of these processes have been automated through ai algorithms and it's increasingly being uh, used uh, in uh, automating tasks much faster as well and so more reliable uh, and among other things what's again uh, very important here is that through automation the cost has also gone down and healthcare is very uh, costly affairs right and if the cost goes down because of automation it helps the patients as well because they can now afford treatment uh, then personalized health services um, whether is collection of clinical and molecular data uh in order to understand uh the relationship between more uh you know uh gene based information to the disease of that given person and then uh, recommend medication based on that uh, you know that relationship and that's possible only when you have gamut of data like you know for millions of patients uh something of that sort wasn't possible like 20 25 years back but now it's possible with advancement of uh, computing facilities where you have lots of such data available and with with this click of a button you can you can really understand the relationship and the doctors is now more informed the doctor has better insights available for the recommendation of uh, treatment uh, for the for the given patient so it's more so to say personalized now and uh, as i said in the corona times uh, artificial intelligence uh, is also helping not just in clinical trial as i said uh, a couple of slides back but also in treating actual patients in many countries the ai uh, enabled robots are now helping patients because you know, as you know it's bit you know dangerous for the healthcare professionals to be close to the corona infected patients and there uh, in many countries the robots are helping um and you might have read about it in uh, different news articles so these are some of the case studies um for data uh, i will i'll make another video actually that where you can find healthcare data what are the different sources available so these are some of the case studies you can also try to in case you are you know writing your master thesis or doing your phd or you know developing uh, or your product for startup or something also consider some of these problems problem areas and have a, a novel solution uh, in these areas thank you